Hi guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So in this episode, the title gives it away, we're going to make the low profile DTI holder that uh, Stefan Gottesvinter, I believe it's pronounced, made. I don't know whether you guys follow him, but he kindly put the set of drawings up for the low profile DTI holder. So I thought that's really useful. I could do with one of those. I'm going to make one. Um, I Now bear in mind, I've lost a lot of the footage of making the main body. So with that said, I'll explain what I've done uh, with the components and we'll go from there. I've modified the drawing slightly or the uh, unit slightly to fit my DTI, uh, which is a more and right DTI. Um, and Stefan made them out of tool steel and had them, um, I believe, uh, not case hardened, uh, he had them hardened anyway, and I haven't got the facility to have them hardened. So the moving part, instead of making out of uh, having a hardened body and a hardened slide, I'm having a soft state D2, even though it's very, very tough, and a brass slide. So that should help with the way. Um, so yeah, those are the things I've changed. And obviously a few dimensions have changed to suit my DTI as opposed to the, the one Stefan's got. I haven't got a Ma DTI, uh, but I have got a more and right, so happy days. And yeah, change a few things round just to suit what I've got. And a few design changes to make it simpler to make for me. Um, yeah, so I'll take you on the journey, guys. So let me show you and explain what I did off camera. So main body of the unit, I uh, made it out of D2, which is tool steel, and it's good tough stuff. Um, so slowly, I machined it with a carbide end mill, um, blocked it up, first of all, square, everything square into size, um, left it all half mil over on all dimensions. Then I roughed out everything other than the slots here. Um, you know, removed the mass bulk of material. Then I came back, finished all the outsides to size, overall dimensions, then went back and finish milled uh, all the rest of the dimensions to size. So any movement would already have happened. Then the final thing I did was to cut the slot and then cut the slot in the bottom for the little bolt that holds the slider in. Um, so the slot measured up a hair. I did get my uh, slip gauges out and it measured up a hair under six mil. I didn't take another cut, but the finish and everything came out really nice. And obviously I've stoned over all surfaces and removed all burrs. So that's where I am with that. So I then moved on and you'll see most of the machining of this to make a part that's wrong. Um, so yeah, machine the bottom, turn it over, and machine the wrong piece off. That piece is supposed to be milled down, and the block is supposed to be on this side. So as you can see, um, when it's on there, the high part's supposed to be up here. So that went in the scrap, and I moved on and started all over. And that's where I actually am at this point, once I realised I've lost the footage. So we'll show you the making of... Uh, I correct one of these let's take it that the last clip you saw where I milled the wrong side off that I'd mailed the right side off and then the rest of this is moving on from there so um, yeah I'll show you what we've got so the sliding part that holds the clock I've decided to make it out of brass bronze would have been better but I didn't have any bronze but I did have a suitable sized piece of brass so I blocked it up, squared it up to finish sizes as to what it showed on Stefan's drawings. Um, and I know the first shoulder, I'm, I'm making the key on the bottom now, the first shoulder is four mil up from the outside edge. So I've touched on the outside, I've gone to the full two mil depth, and I'm just stepping over half mil at a time until I get the four mil. So I'll finish the one side, basically. So this key, uh, Stefan did show that this is one of the most important bits. It has to be a nice sliding fit in that slot we did earlier. So what I'll do is go the other side of this key now, uh, when I've done this side to 4mm. I know it's nominal 6. I'll scribe a line, 6.5, something like that. I'll come in from the other side, doing exactly what I'm saying, uh, same as I'm doing now. And then when I get somewhere close, you know, 6.1-ish, 
Uh, we'll do touches at a time then till we get size. But we've got the DRO. Should be fairly straightforward. So I'll be creeping up on this now. Um, I've just put another two thou cut on, 0 0.05 millimetres. I think we should be very nearly in the right spot. So I'm just going to let that run across. Run it back the other way. And I'm going to take the little fur off the top. I'm going to try it. Okay, let's just stop that cutter. Remove a little burr there. Let's try the groove. Well, <laughs> um, that end. I can't try that end. Let's try it a bit further up. I'm going to take another let's see uh, 0.0 I was on 1.2 and now I'm on 1.22 so just under a thou let's see how that fares And I can always do a bit of work with a stone and what have you in the groove and on that little tongue. But I think this should be it. I mean, it was just trying to start and taking another cloud. I know what I might do. Oh, I put some slip gauges in my groove and it was around. Yeah. A 6mm wouldn't go in. 5.95 mil wood, 5.98 wood, so it's around the 5 point, yeah, 98, 99, something like that, 998, sorry. So, um, let's just bring it out of the way. Let's just get both of these this time. You know, it goes in. Ah, uh, do I? Do I take another thou off it? I'm going to take another, oh, take another thou, I think. Okay, do the same again. Whatever I put on that time, do it again. Let's try that. So I'm using that. A sliding rail as a gauge, in effect. I'm going to call it a bat anyway. The rest of it I'm going to do by fitting. Uh, yeah. <coughs> I mean, if it needs another file, that can be filed off, dressed off, stoned off, what have you. I can do it by fitting it. So this tang is two mil deep. The slotted bits in is two and a half. So there's no drastic need for um, a big chamfer on the end. The break edge is all I put on there. Let's have it out from there. So I think I'll deburr all this now. Let's just <laughs> Well, <laughs> it fits, um, and it fits well. So let's just move it to another spot in the middle of that groove. Yeah, I mean, it fits really well. I need to deburr it. But yeah, it will fall out. Let's try it up this end. Oops, it doesn't go that way, it goes that way. You know, it's, it's a good fit. I think I'm happy with that. So I flipped it round the other way now, the key is at the back there, um, and it's level. I had to break out an adjustable parallel to get that height just right so that I can um, machine it down far enough without hitting my vice. So I've just put that as a 2mm cut. 
Let's just rough this out, I think, first. There'll be a brass, obviously, I can uh, go quite strongly on this. So I need to go 11 and a half deep from this face. But I can use the feed, I think. So 11 and a half deep overall and then down to a thickness of the block left at the back of 12 mil. So yeah, roughing out. Um, it's not critical, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this quickly now. So I'm just step it over one mil at a time and the mill off depth. Again, just roughing. So that should be about it. I'll put the calipers on that in a second, measure it where we are. I think it will be about 0.3 or over, something like that. Let's have a little squint. Twelve point two five, okay. Let's just set a zero there. Let's go to I'll tell you what I'll do. If I go to 0.25 on my DRO, I'm going to reset a zero. I know that's my end point. So if I come back here, let's finish the steps off. Cutter should be about half mil off the off the part when I'm at depth. That's just another half mil there. Step across. So I'm at the bit now where I need to see what angle this is off the back of the clock, the flat plane of the clock, so that I can machine the copper, copper? <laughs> brass block. So got my clock set up here. I've got set a zero in X on the mill. So if I just bring the clock down, let's just bring it down touch more okay zero on the clock so I'm going to zero out my DRO on my quill I'll just wind back off again let's wind off a fair way so I'm going to travel my table along I had a zero 10 millimeters so think of this as a 10 mil sign bar in effect but So along the um, the base of this triangle, shall we say, I'm travelling 10 mil. Can't quite find it. There we are. Right. So if I come back down now, wind back down with my quill to the same zero. So that's round to the first zero. Okay. If I take a reading, I'll bring you round to it, off the DRO on my quill so I know how much further up I am than where I was at the bottom uh, theoretically and I will double check this I'm on zero now but it's reading 2.63 so if I zero it out there I'll just come off again go back 10 just to double check back to zero so I've moved 10 mil along the base in the flat plane and let's see how much I rose up so if I wind down to the same touch point to the zero again and 2.63 again reading on the quill so I know for a 10 mil of travel my rise is 2.63 mil so if I say 2.63 over 10 which is 0.263 I need the tangent of that to give me the angle so the tan of 0.263 so do that on a calculator we'll have a look so there we are, we did it twice, 0.263 quill reading. So that's how much that slope rises up over a distance of 10 mil. Bring it to my sketch. So here's my triangle. Over a distance of 10 mil, the DTI rose up 0.263. So 0.263 divided by 10, over 10. The tangent of 0.263 instead of 2.63 
works out at roughly 14 degrees 50 minutes. So I'm going to say that that is a nominal 15 degrees. I'm, yeah, I'm going to say it's 15 degrees is probably what it's meant to be. So that's what I'm going to put the angle at, and we're going to be pretty close. So even though we're, in, oh, standing on the floorboard where the camera is, and as you can see, if I move, camera moves. Okay, done a bit of a cheat. I've got the clock pushed down on a parallel. Okay, under there. And I've just held the clock down and pushed the block to the... Oh, I've just messed it up. Okay, you can get the idea of what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'll have to come around and do this again. But I've, I've set the block to the angle on the clock. So I can just pull the clock back down. So the clock on a parallel, like you can see, set the block to that angle, the bottom of the block. And then that <laughs> brings the face that I want to machine at the right approach angle. So uh, I've used... Uh, the DTI itself as a setting block to set the block up as a gauge, a 15 degree angle gauge or whatever that is. So I think we've got it now. I'll just nip the vise. Um, I'm offsetting the vise, but I'm only taking light cuts on this. It's going to be a very gentle exercise. So uh, I'm quite happy to nip the vise up there. And again, with this being a grinding vise, it doesn't tip at all. So with that all set up and clamped down, uh, let me just bring it out. You can see a scribe line on there. 3.5 mil from the end. So I'm just coming down till I get to that scribe line. And we're putting that flat on all the way across. And then we'll cut the dovetail feature into this, what will then be the flat surface. But touch more. Okay, that's intersected. I need to come back across now. Just widen that cut up against the back face. I'm just going to blend this in. I'm not, uh, it hasn't got to be on the button. And I can dress it with a file afterwards if I'm not quite there. But we'll get. Close as my eyes will let me. And of course, I can use my ears as well. Because if I'm touching that back place, I'll be able to hear it. Point one. Right, I'm going to go for the noise now. Nope, still can't hear it. Let's take another cut. I think, I think we're there. That appears to have cut there at the base. All right, I'm going to call that done. So, you can just see this bottom section has just cut. What I've cut away is just touching this sort of area here, but it's not touching on the top. Okay, I think that's... If I was to try and take a bit more, I'd be reducing the size, so I'm going to stay there. Right, so I need to work out now how wide the T-slot is in the, um, the dovetail, I should say, in the um, part at its narrowest, and then how deep it's going to be. So this dovetail is going to be, or the square cut, is not going to be as deep as the dovetail on the part, because we don't want this top rubbing, we want the other part rubbing so right okay it'll all become clear so I'm in the middle of that face now the five mil cutter and I need to go 1.4 millimeters deep the dovetail is 1.5 
Let me just check something a minute. Yeah, I did tighten the collar. <laughs> I couldn't remember tightening the collar. So that's point four. I'll just work back and forth, going down like point two at a time. Nice and gentle, because I'm, I'm only holding it gently. And of course, the the angled parts at the outside of the dovetail, I'm going to file. So it's only small, it'll only be a small bit of filing, triangular needle file, and I'm going to file the dovetail out either side until I get a nice slipping fit with the clock. Again, it's going to have a slit down it and a clamp screw, so it hasn't got to be deadly accurate, it's going to clamp. So back the other way. 1.4mm deep anyway, I'll keep going. So final pass, I, did, I decided in the end to go for the one, the full 1.5mm deep. Okay, so that's ready to accept um, my needle file now. So yeah, I'll needle file, take it apart, do some hand fitting, get the DTI to fit into there. Nice sliding fit. You know, it's not that fussy. As I said, I'm going to be having a slit and a clamp. Okay, so I've just drilled through centre line this way, six mil from this back edge. I've dropped back a bit from Stefan's drawing because my angle is steeper than the one on Stefan's. Uh, I believe mine's like 14 degrees. Stefan's was 12, 12 and a half. Somewhere between 11 and a half and 12 and a half, I believe. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so right through with a 2.5 drill. And now just sort of centre of the slot here, I'm going to go um, with a 3.1 drill. Then I'm going to spot face it down in for a little M3 screw I've got. With a 6mm cutter, spot face it down in um, deep enough to take that head. I dropped back because I didn't want that head interfering with the T-slot when it clamps in. Or the dovetail, keep calling it a T-slot. The dovetail. I've got the splitting wheel set up now. I've gone to within 2mm. This is, should be the final cut. I looked at 2.5, but I think I'll go 2mm from the outside edge. So I've cut it off, all bar, 2mm. That was just a half mil pass through there. And of course, set up smack bang in the middle of the dovetail. Didn't say T-slot this time. Okay, so that's that done. So we've got the bolt hole and the um, slit. So uh, just need to run the tap down through it now and that's that side done. I've got a datum where centre was, so yeah, I'll go back to centre. In fact, I can use the 3.1 as a tap guide, so I don't even need to uh, do it in the machine. Um, so yeah, I need to flip it over now and do another M3 shallow for the clamp stud. Not the best angle, but tap that hole through. Not the best angle because it shows all my junk pile over there. <laughs> okay, so um, that's the clock. Fitted in the part, slit, dovetail, clamps nicely. Um, yeah, it's in there and it's lock solid. It doesn't take much of a nip on there and it's lock solid. So, um, yeah, moving on now. So I need to put the hole in the top of here for the eccentric pin, uh, the holding pin. Now, Stefan put a 10 mil hole in his with an M3 up, the, up from the bottom. We're still going to use an M3 up from the bottom. And then he stepped down, I believe, to a 6, a six mil shank. More often than not, in my mill, I've got a 12 mil collet in. This chuck uses a 12, my fly cutter uses a 12. Lots of parts that I use have a 12 mil shaft, and I've more often than not got the 12 mil collet in. So I'm going to make it with a 12 mil shaft, and I'm going to put the eccentric as the bit that fits in the hole instead of the bit on the top. So I'm going to put an 8 mil hole in. So I've done a bit of working out based on my DTI. And I'm just going to find centre here. That centre line of this block will work out about right for uh, where I want to hold this way. So let's just speed that up a bit. Tend to run my little wobbly here about 1000 RPM. Bit. So 
Z0 in X. Let's just wind across. Uh, let's just stop that a second. Don't try and straighten out a wobbler with your fingers because it'll bite you. Okay, we get close. This particular wobbler is a hundred thou tip. However, there we go. Um, doesn't matter because I'm centre finding, so I'll go to my DRO. I'll just show you that. I always get loads of reflection here. So, um, okay, so that's the point where it's just popped off. If I just push the X half, it halves that figure, so I know if I went to zero, that'll be the centre of the block. So it, obviously the stylus offset is the same both sides on the wobbler. So zero is my centre mark. Okay, so I need to edge find off the back now and I know I need to come 16 mil forward. Let's just stop that wobbler again. Put the edge finder back. So I've worked out the centre point of my stylus. I uh, measured it before I put this block in. Centre point of my stylus from the back edge of the block is 16 mil. So if I edge find the back here, okay. Um, let's just set Y zero. Stop that. Um, so I need half the stylus, fifty thou. So I'll move that first. So I'll just convert my DRO over to Imperial for a second and move it. 50,000, which is, come on, there, okay, I'll set my Y to zero again, then go back to metric, and then wind over 16 mil, so I'm going to lock my X and Y on the zero zero part or zero one way and 16 mil the other in fact that's just locked on 16 i'm going to zero that again in y and i'm going to lock x everything's locked off zero zero i'm where i want my hole so put a spot drill in marked it 3.1 now for the three mil screw that's going to come from the back and i've also set a stop so i don't go marking my vice well i haven't set a stop i've set a zero Okay, that's it. And I was 0.5 away from my zero when that broke through. So, yeah, I didn't want to go marking my vice. So, um, eight mil hole in here now. I'm going to open it up with like a seven mil drill to approximate depth or to a depth. Um, I need to bear in mind that I need three mil of countersink for the bolt. Um, so I'll decide on how deep I'm going to do this ball. And I think what I will do is use an 8mm cutter, probably straight in the chuck here, to open up that hole to a depth. So I've got a nice, well, squarish bottom. Doesn't matter because the part is going to clamp against this top face, not against the bottom like it did with Stefan's. So Stefan needed to have a... Flat bottom in the hole, which he used a boring bar for, I believe, uh, with his nice uh, uh, boring head with the uh, traversing feed on it. I haven't got one of those, so I've just got a plain boring head. Um, so I'm going to make the pin to suit the hole. Uh, I'll have this part as a gauge for the pin. So uh, that's how I'm going to do it, slightly different. Uh, yeah, so I need an 8mm hole in here. 8 mil cutter's going to do me fine. I'll rough it out, 7.5 mil drill, then pop the 8 mil cutter in and we'll go from there. So a quick bit of working out. Countersink head on my bolt is 3 mil. I'm going to leave 2 mil of uh, 3.1 diameter. So 5 mil I need to leave not uh, on this. It's 12 overall, so my total depth is 7 mil. So if I just touch my 7.5 drill on there, zero my quill, and let's just... Probably 
put a bit of compound on there might help that chatter in a bit. As I say, this D2 is tough stuff. That's why I'm running quite slow. Oh, that helped a lot. So I'm going to stop at seven. Obviously, it won't be flat bottom. A six. Seven. Okay, call that done. So I've got to cut her up. I know it's in the chuck. I'm not milling with it. I'm going down straight. On odd occasions with light cuts, that's fine. I know this rule is 0.8. So set a zero on my quill. So I can go 7.8 deep. So I think I'm going to use the feed for this. Fine feed. So 7.8. Yeah, it can go a little faster. Four, five, we don't have seven. Okay. I'm winding back out. Okay. So, that will give me a hole. Normally, nominally, 8 mil. Won't be 8 mil, it'll be whatever that car is, plus whatever it's throwing by, etc, etc. So, I think we'll have a little chamfer on there. Now, let's take that out again. Let's put the cutter away. And a little chamfer. That should be fine. Okay. So that's that hole. Um, I will need to put a counter bore on the other side using six mil cutter probably um, to get the counter bore for the M3 screw again. Um, and I'm going to turn whatever piece, the 8, offset 8 by 12mm, I'm going to turn that um, with the eccentric, and obviously when it's in, offset in the eccentric, that's the point where I put the M3 hole in. Uh, it'll all become clear. So I flipped the part over the other way in the vice, down on the same parallel. I didn't have to play with Y because um, I'm the same distance from the back jaw. I haven't moved Y on the table at all. So I just jiggled about with X until the 3.1 drill drops in the hole. Now I can put the 6mm counter bore in. Okay, so 6mm cutter, touch on, set a zero, 3mm deep. In fact, I think I'll use fine feet for this. I hope my arm's in the way, sorry guys. That's cutting fine. We're at two already. That is three mil deep. Okay. That looks fine. Uh, so let's swap. Do this in real time. Take that cutter out. Already got the canvas sink at the ready. Make sure nothing's going to foul. And a little canvas sink on the hole. And that is job done as far as that part's concerned. Okay, so I need to move on now and see what else we're going to do. We just put the part up on end now. It's going to be the hole for the handle. 
the thread for the handle. Um, M4. So we've got the M4 tap and drill up. I'm just going to put a hole in here. Yeah, let's go. That'll do. 8 mil deep. That'll, that's more than enough. Okay. Um, so that's that done. Uh, we'll have a little chamfer on there. Have I got a chamfer in a bit small enough for that? I'm sure I have. Yes. I need to keep an eye out for chamfering bits. I'm low on good ones, smaller ones. I've got like a large one that does 25 mil, but uh, I'm a bit short on small ones so I'll have to keep an eye out see where I can find some anyone got some suggestions put it in the comment whether they're on Amazon or whatever if you've got experience small can't sink in bits um, yeah that'll do sort of let's say between a three and a ten mil hole that that sort of range I'm okay above that so I have way too much time invested in this part to go machine uh, tapping it under power so I'm just going to do it by hand. I did start it first couple of turns in the chuck while it was in position over the hole we drilled just to square it up but uh, no, not taking any chances with this uh, and one of the reasons I went from M3 I mean it doesn't need M4 but I went up a size just to uh, not tempt fate. So even though I've gone away from the drawing and what have you um, let's just put that there okay so that's how it sits um, there's a big chunk of metal here which I don't think needs to be there if I were to cut it off across there where the rule is remove that chunk of metal altogether I don't think it's needed okay so that's one thing I'm going to do if I turn it around the other way this piece of metal here doesn't need to be here uh, let's take that out carefully <laughs> and maybe chop that off on that angle there chop that piece off it isn't doing anything let's do it so I scribed a little line on the block 16 mil in which is um, the width of this face so that's you know basically where it stops so I've just taken an adjustable parallel set it on the height of that corner and then just move it around the back and then eyeball it to intersect with that line then I've jiggled it round move it set it check it test it go back and forth took me about a minute and now I'm clamped up with the part and I've got the angle between that line and that line so yeah adjustable parallels can be useful sometimes well it could be useful quite regularly so uh, yeah that's that set of that angle uh, I'm going to be nice and gentle with this going to get a carbide cutter up and just rough this out and take it off Final cut, tooth out. Just marking on that line that I drew. And intersecting with the top bit here. So it intersects that line there. Can't see it now, there's too much junk in the way. And the top of here. So that's that one done. I'm very happy with that, that lined up well. I like the power a little trick. So I roughed it out uh, with an 8mm carbide cutter, only back to about here, um, just leaving a little lump on the top by the intersection. And now I swapped over to a ball ended one, touched off in Z, which is where I am with this cutter, and I'm just walking it across in X until I blend in the intersection 
I'm very close to my vice here, but I am actually 0.3 off the surface. Um, so a little bit more, I can still see witness of the old square edge. We are getting there. Let's have a look at that. A bit more. Further than I think, actually. Now we start to lose that little intersection line from the old square edge. Are we? Just uh, yeah, there's still a lip there. Now it's getting smaller. It's not shining up so much. That looks really close to me. I think we've got uh, still a tiny bit. A couple of five. I think that might be it. Maybe a bow. Well, so far so good. Um, yeah, I mean, I've started putting a bit of polish and cleaning things up and, you know, removing machining marks. Um, so there's the uh, brass part um, in the holder. That works well and then that's what the main body is where we are with that so all the square stuff as i said i lost the footage but never mind um uh, it's it's pretty mundane sort of machining so uh i think that's about it for this one guys um thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and we'll see you all very soon oh and thanks to stefan as well for the designs the original designs if you go to stefan's channel uh, you'll see low profile DTI holder and I think in the first episode if you look in the description You'll see the link to uh, the drawings for this So yeah, I've had to adapt it and I've changed it slightly to suit my needs and you know add a bit of aid to it um, It's never going to be as good as Stefan's I'm sure but um, I like it and I'm sure I'm going to find it useful when I when it's finished Okay, cheers now